Tonight we had the first snow of the season and it literally all came at once. But I am choosing to vlog inside for today. So let's start this vlog now. And if I was living another life in another world, my first wish would be that I would not have this disease because it's annoying to say the least. I just want to say that I'm feeling pretty well at this moment and uh, that's very good but I do have a few issues that I want to share with you and they are of course related to my health and my idiopathic intracranial hypertension. First off I have started to decrease my dosage of uh, antidepressants and for those of you who don't know me I was diagnosed with a depression and a stress disorder before I got my IH diagnosis, but I think that was related to my then undiagnosed IIH. And today was the first day that I took a lower dose of my medication, so it, it's too early to reevaluate the um, effect of that. But I wanted to do that because. I do have a goal of being off my medica medication for my depression. I think that's a good thing. And I was on a low dose, but I'm now on an even lower dose. And I want to do it slowly because it can affect your uh, hormones and stuff like that. So if you plan on doing that, please talk to your doctor. Do not take this as medical advice. I have, of course, uh, discussed this with my doctors. So the next point that I'm going to talk about is of course related to my idiopathic intracranial hypertension. I do have some kind of blur vision, especially in the outer parts of, parts of my vision. It's not a vision blackout or anything like that. It's just a little bit blurry and uh, this is a sign of IH and uh, it's a it's a sign that the cerebrospinal fluid is pushing towards my optic nerves and um, I have gotten used to that but it's still a little bit uh, frightening to be honest and it's not really something that had been like worse since I stopped my Diamox medication a couple of weeks ago but it's been persistent and it's it is there and uh, I remembered when before I was diagnosed I had this like uh, blurry vision in the outer parts of my my eyes for weeks and maybe months and it wasn't that obvious that something was wrong with my eyes and it, I have the same same feeling now so I do believe that that's a sign of me that maybe my IH is going to get worse that I maybe need the medication. But uh, my doctor know about this and uh, he has told me that it, it can go up and down like this. And the results at my eye doctors was uh, uh, pretty okay. The last time I visited them about uh, one and a half month ago or something like that. and. I'm going to my next appointment in like one and a half month and if it is worse than then I might have to start with the medication and of course I will talk to my eye doctors and neurologists if something gets worse. I don't like that I have this sort of blurry vision because uh, it is it's annoying, it's not something that affects me in my everyday life, it really doesn't do that for me. and. My vision field is great, so that's a positive sign, but it's annoying and I don't want to have it, but that's a, a part of the disease for me. That's just straight out is how it is for me. And the next part is about the headaches. And uh, if I look back a week or two weeks, I haven't had any real headaches and that's great because the headaches can be 
overwhelming. It's like your head is blowing up from the inside while you have three persons jumping on your head at the same time. That's how strong my headaches can be when they are severe. Of course, I can have some kind of uh, light headache sometimes, but that's just not annoying at all, not compared to what the worst headache can be. And if you do have IIH, I think you probably know what I'm talking about. Not having headaches is such a great feeling because you can really enjoy your life in a whole another level. But unfortunately, I do still experience fatigue. And fatigue is something that can really change your life. Because fatigue is basically that you are getting abnormally tired by your disease. And we're not talking like you have to go to sleep like 15 minutes or 30 minutes. It's you really, really have to do something else your mind is completely uh, messed up, you can't think straight. If you do something, you maybe not understand what you're doing and it might be difficult for you to take instructions. And sometimes I feel that. So um, it's still a part of me, but it's way way better than it was before I got my diagnosis. It's just so much better. So I don't do every kind of uh, task at work. I have some tasks that I am not really able to do. In plain words, there are some surgeries that I can't do because it, it gets me so, so tired with those big, massive surgeries. And for those of you that don't know me, I am an OR nurse working with a surgeon in the surgical field doing surgeries on people. But I can go to work and I have a work that I can enjoy. But of course I don't want this fatigue, but I have sort of accepted it. You just have to find ways on how to deal with it. And uh, my way of dealing with it is to make adjustments at work and I take breaks at work and I also take breaks at home and I also go to the gym when I feel that I have the energy to go to the gym and I skip the gym or skip go out running when I feel that it's just going to drain me too much. But a main thing that I'm focusing on regarding my fatigue is I still try to do what I think is fun to do and I still go out for walks and uh, try to be as physically active as possible possibly when I can if I can't do it stay at home or do something else at work just make make some rearrangements that works for you and of course uh, what works for me might not work for you, but um, if you have a problem with fatigue and you don't know how to deal with it, uh, I just have to say that it was so for me in the beginning too. I didn't really know what to do and it took me a good half a year maybe to understand what worked for me. I like to enjoy life and I like to enjoy the positive things about my life and something that I really really do love to do is traveling and visit new places. So uh, that's a big part of my life and if I was able to do it and, and could afford to travel more I would of course do it. But I can't afford to travel all the time of course. But anyway, tomorrow I am going to Gothenburg in southwestern Sweden. It's a city with 500 inhabitants and I have lived in Gothenburg before and visited Gothenburg many times before. So it's a city that, yeah, technically it's not a new place for me because I really know the ins and outs of that city. But um, 
I love that city and I'm going down there tomorrow to spend the weekend there and uh, walk around in the city, go to cafes, restaurants, maybe hit a museum or something like that. And I'm going to sleep at a hotel and eat great uh, hotel breakfast. I planned on meeting a couple of friends down there, but uh, none of them was available this weekend. So I'm going to spend the weekend alone in Gothenburg and that's not a problem for me. I love doing that and it's going to be such a fun thing to do to just go away for a couple of uh, days. Leave this city, do something else, leave this snow because it's probably not snow down there, but uh, Maybe it's raining instead, but it's going to be so fun. And I think I'm going to make a weekend in my life vlog about my trip to Gothenburg. So that might be the next uh, video that I am uploading, but um, maybe not, but probably. But anyway, I think that's going to be the end of this vlog. See you in the next one. And uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button, and leave a comment, subscribe. It really helps me spread knowledge about this disease and my life and my story. And I really, really appreciate it. So thank you for that. Bye.